All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. I know you're going to enjoy this episode. Really quick, if you're a trainer or looking to be a trainer or just looking to build your business, I have a best-selling book called The Six-Figure Trainer. If you would like this book, you can get this book for $5. All you have to do is go to courses.wordred.com forward slash book sales letter. Again, that's courses dot royred.com forward slash book sales letter and this book goes for a hundred dollars on amazon it's the same strategy i use to get my ten thousand dollar clients the same strategies that some of my students have used to make tons of money open their own gyms within a year and build their businesses strategies that will literally show you how to go from having no clients to filling up your calendar in an instant if that's something you're interested in, you can get that book for just $5. Just go to courses.royred.com forward slash book sales letter. Again, that's courses.royred.com forward slash book sales letter. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Success Code, where Roy Red provides interviews, discussions, strategies, and talks to help broaden your perspective on your road to cracking the Success Code, which is a personal, self-expressive journey. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. It's Roy Red, four-time best-selling author and host of this show, The Success Code. And today I'm excited and honored to have Kenneth Galarzo. Kenneth is the leading calisthenics trainer, beast, whatever you want to call him on Instagram. He owns the Instagram account, Progressive Calisthenics. I've been following this guy for years, watching all the things he could do. I tried to, <laughs> tried to start doing calisthenics and tried to do start trying to do some of this stuff and I just couldn't do it. And I actually had to stop watching him because he was making me feel bad about myself. And then I said, (laughs) man, I gotta, (laughs) I said, man, I gotta, you know, being strong in the gym, lifting all these weights. I said, man, I gotta really get this kind of cynic stuff down. And I said, you know what? I gotta interview this guy, get his mindset and figure out what his background is, his story and kind of see you know, how we can master our bodies and master ourselves and master our minds ourselves. Kenneth, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. So Kenneth, just to start off, can you just tell us a little bit about your still, about yourself, your background, um, and uh, how you got into calisthenics? Yeah, so I mean, growing up, I always played uh, sports. I played baseball. You know, I did taekwondo and you know, um, just various sports. And once I got to high school, I never really, you know, gone into the weight room. I had gone in for like baseball, but it wasn't anything serious. And, um, you know, so I started lifting with a few friends in high school towards the end of high school. And I really enjoyed knowing that I can get stronger. Yeah. Um, you know, from the first day I walked in there, I didn't feel very strong, but as time passed and I was getting more and more strength, you know, it's very encouraging to me. So it was something that kind of stuck stuck with me, you know, maybe not um, adamantly and always sticking to it, but you know, I I never stopped. Yeah. And um, eventually I decided, you know what, Um, I think I want to, I want to become a trainer. Like I like being in the gym and I want to teach people how to train and get stronger. So I went and I got my, my first certification and I ended up getting a job at uh, 24 hour fitness and, you know, became an instructor there. Mm-hmm. And um, that's where I saw calisthenics for the first time. There was a guy doing some muscle ups and I was just blown away, you know, and wow. someone else had told me about some movements about people doing handstand pushups with no wall and he- describing human flags. And in my head, I was just blown away. And I thought to myself, like, here I am thinking that I spent all these years getting strong, but I can't do this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, you know, with me, um, I learned how to do muscle ups. I kind of got introduced to it the same way you did. So I got the gym doing muscle ups. was like, hey, I want to try. And I'm a fast learner, so I was able to do it. 
and started doing slow muscle ups. And I actually saw the guy break the world record, which was like 26 muscle ups in a row, where I was like, mm, that's really not that hard. And then I was like, let me see how many I could do. And I did like 12. And so I was like, hmm, I've been eyeballing that record for a while. But all the other stuff, like planches, levers, all that stuff is extremely hard. What, how did you start learning that stuff? And, and what made you want to decide to, um, to, to go towards mastery in uh, calisthenics? You know, initially, um, I was trying to do more of a hybrid between weights and, and calisthenics. And the more that I immersed myself in it, the more that I started to understand the movements, the more that I got comfortable with the training, mm -hmm. the more time I felt like I needed for calisthenics and the less time I needed for weights. And, you know, I think I had a serious advantage over a lot of people because I was already a personal trainer. I had a fitness background. I kind of understood, uh, you know, performance-based training. So I knew how to increase my strength. I knew how to, you know, make a program that was going to get me stronger over the course of five weeks. Yeah. Um, so I think that really helped, you know, understanding the body from, from what I learned, getting my certifications and just training people over the years. Mm -hmm. It made that transition a lot easier for myself. And gradually, I found myself only training calisthenics. And the more I started to understand, you know, the movements, the easier it became to, um, you know, program things and put things together, where eventually I felt comfortable to the point where now all my clients are only calisthenics, not because I was trying to find like a perfect system for them. It was just like, this is what I think is ideal for you. And I started training all my clients in just calisthenics, regardless of the level. And do you still use weights to help um, with different movements? Um, just watching your account, I see, you know, sometimes you do handstands with weights, which is ridiculous. Pull-ups with weights and stuff like that. Does, um, is that just resistance to help with the regular movements? Yeah, so I think I would kind of call that weighted calisthenics, you know, just doing the basic movements and adding weight to it. Um, just another way to to increase that stress. I think a big thing in training is knowing how to constantly challenge yourself. So if you're doing the same thing over and over, you'll get to the point where that movement shouldn't be as difficult as it was the first time. And therefore, if you want the same challenge, you need to find a way to increase that stress. Uh -huh. And one of the easiest ways is to simply add weight. And then, you know, learning the body weight leverage and the mechanics of the body, you know, those things take a little bit more time, but they can get you you know, the equal results. Um, you know, I work with a lot of pro athletes uh, mentally and my dad is a physical trainer and he works with pro athletes physically. And my dad's always talking about um, a concept called proprioception. Um, basically just knowing where you are in time and space. And I can't see anything better at increasing and making proprioception better then calisthenics just thinking about it and looking at it and how does that work and what do you what is your self-talk in your mindset when you're just doing a handstand and um things where the your proprioception gets very difficult because you're upside down in awkward positions where you have to you have nowhere where you're grounded um that you're used to so I think it's something that comes with training. Um, you, you build that awareness. Um, you build that ability to understand yourself in your surroundings. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, you know, it's probably more difficult. And over time, you start to have a little bit more control. You know, there's just a little more subtle engagement of certain smaller muscle groups where you start to find the control in the wrist and the hands and the fingers and, you know, all these little things that, you were just trying to power through, you're now finding engagement in. And, um, you know, over time, it's just almost like, if I can control a little bit more of those smaller muscles, that means I'm taking control on a energetic level of, you know, my, my atoms, right, my molecules. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm just taking greater control of myself on a very subtle level, even if it's just with the handstand. And I think that's what's so dope about it is the self mastery part. Um, 
and just being, you know, me being not very patient, how long would you say would it take someone who's strong, a good athlete to, to progressively, like, like your account says, to tr start building this up? And I know it will probably be like a mastering type of thing of years and really changing, but um, to really get into it, how long would you say it would take someone who wants to take it serious? So I think there are, there are many factors. I think, um, you know, where someone is in their life, if somebody's, you know, 17 or 25 or 55 is going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if somebody's in their prime, they've been active. I think all of this is achievable within a couple of years. The hard part is understanding how to do it. Um, you know, when, it, when you walk into the weight room, it's very simple to say, you know what, I was able to achieve that weight. I'm going to go up 10 pounds. Yeah. And then I'm going to go up 10 pounds and then I'm going to go up 10 pounds. Well, in calisthenics, you have to bridge the gap between doing a push up on the ground and then imagining doing a push up with your feet off the ground. And there's a lot of movements in between because there's no label of this weight and this weight. And this is what I've actually been working on for the last couple of years is developing um, a system where I classify movements into 16 levels, literally starting from people that cannot do a push up, mm -hmm. leading all the way up to planche. Now, if somebody had the patience and the dedication to follow it through and they were of age, they could achieve it. Yeah. It's just about understanding it. And I think, you know, now that I get to the point where I really feel comfortable and I understand it and I can explain, make sense of it in five minutes, you know, it, it mm -hmm. um, now it's, on my fingertips and this is what I'm working on. I'm, I'm working on a book to share this information to make it easier for people to train calisthenics. Uh, that would be super awesome because um, I know a lot of people who want to get into it, but the progression, the progression part, not too many people really know unless you go and do like gymnastics classes or you hire a trainer like yourself. But I think that that's a void that really needs to be um, filled. Because I'll tell you right now, I'll grab that book in a hot second. And, um, <laughs> uh, you know, just I, at some point would need to stop bullshitting and really get into it uh, like I've always wanted to. Um, a lot of the listeners mostly are entrepreneurs, people who just started businesses and then since I work with athletes, uh, a lot of younger athletes are going to be listening and, you know, we're excited, like, yo, ask them this and ask them that. And um, one of my athletes uh, plays at El Camino. He was asking, does calisthenics help with, could it help with basketball and explosion? And I always explain to him that uh, a good trainer creates an environment that's going to uh, create a specific adaptation for your sport. So does calisthenics have any room in helping for sports? 100%. And I think it's really going to be dependent on the sport. Yeah. You know, I think just in general, you know, if, so a basketball player, for example, they need to stay a little bit more uh, flexible and agile. Mm -hmm. So I think to me, having them do, for example, you know, various push-up progressions is going to be good just so that they have that upper body strength in general when they're playing without becoming too rigid, right? Because I don't think, for example, that just because you're playing basketball that you should have no upper body strength. You're still bumping in people. You're still trying to create room. You know what I mean? You still want to be nice and, nice and grounded in there. Mm -hmm. So I think that using calisthenics as opposed to, you know, heavy weightlifting or weightlifting for – that kind of sport would be good just to bring balance to the body and bring overall um, strength without creating too much uh, rigidness in the body. That's awesome. And I also, I also try to tell them all the time, you want to be the part and not look the part. So if you could say something um, in regards to actually being strong and being flexible and be, being able to do this stuff rather than just having abs and looking good because a lot of these you know a lot of my guys just are like man dude you got eight pack ripped abs and I'm like well that's just because I've been working on since I was 15 and you know there's genetic parts to it but um how about being able to move 
uh, and move with strengths and flexibility would be more important than how you look. Yeah, I think that a lot of people overemphasize the aesthetics mm -hmm. without realizing that genetics do does play a part. I mean, if you go to a strongman competition, if you go to a powerlifting competition, you're not going to see a two-pack in sight. No, not at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you're going to get guys that are beyond strong, you know, that are just ridiculous for their size. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to kind of put that aside and understand that, you know, a lot of times what we see in the magazines, what we see in movies, these are things where, where the environment is being manipulated. Maybe people have a special tan, they have special lightings. You know what I mean? Like I've been to photo shoots, man. Like they do wonders with lighting. Yeah. <laughs> and people are comparing themselves to what they're seeing in a magazine. Yeah. When in reality, it's like, listen, there's different body types and somebody having a little bit more body fat and not having a six pack is perfectly 100% capable of outperforming somebody with a 12 pack. Yep. You know what I mean? There's just some people that genetically find it a little bit easier to, to take off some of that body fat while some others hang on to it a little bit more. And even depending on the sport, it might even be better to have a little bit more depending on what you're playing. Exactly. Yeah, you know, a big professional athlete was like asking me, um, dude, how you get the abs? And I was like, you, you shouldn't care about the abs, bro. Like you need to be able to move, be strong on the court, be, be flexible, be able to get your shot off, be able to move in certain positions. And uh, he um, finally got over that concept, you know, being young and wanting all the girls and all that stupid stuff. But um, just kind of moving forward, um, I wanted to get your, a um, little bit of a deeper question, your mindset and philosophy on life. All right. What, what, that's very vague. <laughs> yeah. So um, my philosophy is, self-mastery to keep it um keep it simple um what do you believe like what are you passionate about and what philosophy do you live by um congruently every day that you have to do this every single day obviously working out might be uh, one of them but at a core value what would you say your philosophy on life is my philosophy on life is, um, <laughs> wow, such a loaded question. Yeah. You know, in, it's, hard, it's very hard to say, mm -hmm. um, especially because we live in a day and age where so many people go by labels. Yeah. You know, I think that, I think we live in a world where, you know, I, I, there's a lot of hope. I feel like, um, I feel like people are starting to wake up to um, something greater. I think people are starting to wake up to seeing that um, we're, we should start to look to a, a bigger cause. You know, like I think, you know, the planet, for example, cannot sustain human beings continuing to get more and more and more. At a certain point, you know, things are going to uh, run out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether it be certain resources or, you know, certain plants or certain crops. Um, I think people just need to find out that, you know, we're a lot more connected than they think. And if there was a global catastrophe, for example, you know, the human race would all of a sudden all join hands yeah. and understand that, like, for the human race to continue we or one of us have to continue you know what i mean like yeah. so for as much as we want to view everything as different um there's a more of a oneness that that people don't see other a lot of times or don't understand yeah and i think we've become so self-focused that we've lost sight of of our communities you know what i mean on multiple scales from yeah. you know on your block to you know what I mean? In, in the world and, and not separating yourselves and finding that, you know, we're all human beings. We all bleed. We all breathe oxygen. We all need to eat. Yeah. Um, so I think my philosophy is, is more of um, just trying to understand that 
we're in this together, you know, the, yeah. the whole human race and mm-hmm. um, the planet, you know, I don't think, you know, we all need each other. Yeah. To, to wake up from the illusion of our separateness. I forgot who said that, but um, uh, my dad says it all the time. We are all different, but we are way more the same than we are different. That, 100%. That's clutch. That's super clutch. Um, so you said you worked at 24, you became a trainer. Um, how did you build your brand and your business? Did you just, were you just uh, so good that people were just like, man, I got to follow this guy? Like for me, I did, that's how it happened a while back. I was like, wow, um, this is ridiculous. And I just started following you that way. Um, so how did you kind of uh, do that? So I think there was a, it was a combination of things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I, I'm not going to, I think luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. Right. And I think that I had some good opportunities where in the beginning when Instagram kind of in its infancy, um, I was showed up on their popular page a lot in the beginning. Yeah. So that got me just a ton of followers and then, you know, meeting people and getting shout outs. Mm -hmm. from people who I met just because, you know, like we were sharing a certain movement and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, networking with people. But I think it was a combination of, of, you know, the right place, the right time, along with having substance to go with it. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that, um, yeah, I mean, some of it was just right place at the right time and, and at the same time, you know, being passionate about what I do and being prepared for whatever opportunities came my way. Yeah. And as the community, was this community always there or did it kind of build through you guys and Instagram? Because I know you guys do like um, competitions now with calisthenics and like there's a there's an actual community of people who who are mastering this, um, did that just kind of happen over time or were you guys underground for a a long time? I, I think to at its core, Mm -hmm. um, we probably started it with like small gatherings. Yeah. You know, and, um, as it started to build, I actually, um, I co-founded a competition called battle of the bars. Ah, that's it. Yeah, so then, you know, that also played a part because now you have people practicing, wanting to compete in the event, and, um, you know, like, it just brought, like, a lot of like-minded people who were really fascinated by the movement together, and, you know, it became, like, a, created a little bit of a hub where, you know, if you go on a Sunday to Santa Monica, you're going to find a, at least a few guys on the bars, and, and if it's on a meetup day, you're probably going to find a decent amount. Yeah, even, like people from other countries getting on board with this man i was watching kids from different countries that were just ridiculous and it's really grown into a community into a into a lifestyle yeah 100 percent um so the name of the show is the success code and so i wanted to ask what is success to you and I always get a different answer from everyone. And I find that um, achieving what success is to us is what really brings on success. What is success to you? Um, I think success to me is being able to do the things that, um, do the things that I'm passionate about. Yeah. You know, like I love sharing. I love teaching people about calisthenics. Um, you know, I, I recently became a yoga instructor. I love teaching people about yoga. Wow. Um, I love teaching people about um, Ayurveda, which is the sister science of yoga. Mm-hmm. I just, I love teaching people, man. I love to see people bettering themselves. And I think if, if you can find a way to, you know, I don't want to say make your business because it's so opposite of, I think sometimes passion when people think of passion, but I think if you can, find a way to use your, your passions to um, use, get yourself into a career that use, utilizes those passions, I think you're going to probably find success. I think, I don't want to say success to me wouldn't be doing something I hate every day, but making a lot of money doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd rather do what I love 
even if that meant I wouldn't, I wasn't getting as much as if I was doing something else. Those are okay. Yeah. Um, do you, what's your big, hairy, audacious goal? A big goal that's maybe 5, 10, 15 years down the line, something that you really want to achieve over a course of a long time? Um, well, my first one is, you know, when I first started calisthenics, when I first um, stumbled upon it, I told myself, I want, I wish I knew this when I was younger. I wish I knew about calisthenics when I first started working out. Yeah. I stumbled upon it when I was about 26 years old. And I think at that point, I kind of set out the goal of like, I'm going to expose calisthenics. I'm going to make it available so people know what it is. Yeah. And I think to a, a, a certain degree, like a lot more people know what it is. Yeah. And I think the next, my next big goal is that this book that I'm writing, uh, Systematic Calisthenics, creates the standard of how to train calisthenics. Yeah. of an understanding of, okay, you know what, before I get to a dip that requires me to do push 100% of my body weight, I should be able to do X amount of push-ups that require me to push, you know, 70% of my body weight, yeah. where there's a thorough understanding of some of the mechanics and um, how to put them together where you're, where you're doing it in a balanced way, you're doing a push to equal out a pull that's not going to create discrepancies in the body, but it's going to be, um, you know, in a building in a productive way. Mm -hmm. so I think that I want to create that standard I want people to to look at this book and be like man now I have the roadmap and and the beautiful thing to me is to me all I'm simply doing is labeling the weight yeah I'm not even telling you necessarily how to train you know programming is a whole separate issue not to say I won't discuss basic programming in the book yeah but you know this will just open the door to okay, now I can program it this way. I can program it that way because I identified now the different levels of strength that each movement requires and where it's connected and where it, it supplements or aids another movement. So I want to create that standard where, you know, people just, a lot of these things that are in the book, one day they're common knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just do a handstand push up if you can't do 35, 40 dips. Like, come on, what's wrong with you? Yeah. I want it to be that to get to that point. Thirty-five or forty. Oh man! <laughs> All right, gotta step my game up. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you talked about that. Um, um, some people think calisthenics can cause a lot of injuries, and you were just kind of uh, touching on, which reminded me on doing things properly. Um, is it high risk for injury? I think that any sport, almost any sport, is high risk for injury. Anytime you're pushing your body to its maximum, maximum capacity, there's definitely a chance where you can get injured. Um, but I think it's the same thing with going into the weight room. Like, can you get injured? Yeah. yeah. Can you do it safely? Yes. And I think there are people that are out there that are reckless, and there's some people that are out there and they're very safe. Um, I think it's the same thing with calisthenics. I think I, the only exception is that because – there hasn't been a standard people have been able to be more reckless because they're they weren't able to set a proper foundation because a lot of times that understanding wasn't there yeah you know and i would even speak to saying that the freestyle stuff the tricks part of it is probably going to be on the more dangerous side but that's also going to be on the side of more sport mm -hmm. you know versus you know if i'm doing my normal training i've never had a client get injured in the entire time that I've trained people because I know what I'm doing and I'm gauging mm -hmm. their strength and I'm giving them what it's appropriate for them to be able to control and stabilizing them. And, you know, what happens too is this sport was so new. A lot of people who are not professional trainers um, jumped into it because they were practicing it. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh yeah, I can teach it. Yeah. Or it's like you, you don't have that background that made you a professional in fitness. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and especially just trying to jump into doing some of these really hard movements uh, without the progressions as well. Um, yeah. So one of the things um, I, a lot of my athletes do struggle with as well is their, you know, their girlfriends and 
um, it's just a struggling point, especially when you're young. And I'm scrolling down your page, and I saw that your fiance works out with you. She's a yoga instructor. She works out. And I want to ask you, is it important, do you think it's important to um, be with someone who's congruent with what you're doing and how awesome that is? I think it's very important to for a lot of these young guys to find out who they are first. Yeah. It's like, I always, I use this analogy, you know, let's just say for your entire life, you, you ate at home. Yeah. And then one day someone took you to a restaurant and you're like, Oh my God, this is the greatest place ever. And it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, there could be different types of restaurants. There could be Asian food. There could be Italian food. There could be Mexican food. Um, you know, and it's to say that, Oh yeah, now I understand what I like because I went to this one restaurant. Yeah. It's like, well, I think people are, are too in a rush to commit to finding something and then holding on to it. Where it's just like, listen, you're young, you know, like meet people, have casual friends, get to know people on a, you know, on a, on the surface first before thinking that everything has to turn into a relationship. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're, st we have to stop as men, we have to stop viewing women. The first thing we do is, oh, she's hot. I want to talk to her. It's like, you're, you're already on the basis of seeing her already putting her as like a sexual object. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing wrong with looking at that as human being and maybe finding that you found a, hu a pretty human being mm -hmm. who's also appealing to your eyes. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we're not looking at women like human beings. We're looking at them at, as objects. Yeah. And then, oh, now, now that this pretty thing is interested in me, you know, I'm going to start to have emotions and whatnot without even realizing the that this person might not be right for you because you were not looking at the right things yeah you know uh, so i think for yeah no yeah you, you got it i think a lot of these young men um you know they have to start realizing that um you know like finding a mate is part of the, the human experience and you shouldn't be at a rush to do it nor do i think that you should put pressure on yourself i think that you should enjoy the human experience and you should meet people as human beings. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like things will fall into place, you know, the right people will come into your life, but it's not going to be with starting off with the wrong intention of, yeah. Oh, that person's hot. Yeah. Like, Oh, I want to have that person in, in the sap. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not to say, not to say these are not human things. You know what I mean? We're all here because you know, somebody got horny. Yeah. That's facts. <laughs> I, um, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's such a big issue. Um, literally 95% of the athletes that I've worked with, um, I've worked with them because initially they wanted to talk about issues with their girlfriends or this girl or that girl. And I'm like, dude, you're 21 and you're playing at a D1. Like, you need to... <sighs> not be in a relationship right now and like you said go to different restaurants and especially at some of them's level um they're at a point where it's really really find someone to trust but it's a really really big issue with uh young athletes that i don't really see people talk about that now i'm starting to think maybe i should write about as well yeah i, th I think you know i think um they're looking now what other athletes have done and they're trying to repeat a lot of those steps yeah. and you know it's like why do you want the car because you're going to get the girls and why do you want the girls and it's just all very very superficial you know what i mean and it's like not to say that you shouldn't strive for these things mm -hmm. or to strive to i mean be to find success in your in your sport mm -hmm. but you're potentially now getting your opening yourself to being blindsided by some of these things if you're not focused on what you should be focused on mm -hmm. and finding girls at the club maybe i'm not saying you can't find your wife at the club but um it's when you're at the club spending twenty thousand, you may not find the love of your life i'm just saying yeah <laughs> all right ken thank you so much for your time is there anything i should have asked you no i mean no, I mean, it's your, it's your show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. I feel like we went up and down. We talked training. We talked a little bit of mindset, philosophy. Um, can you please tell everyone where to find you and kind of do a light plug on your book? And when your book comes out, man, I want to possibly do this again and do whatever I need to do to help spread that and market that, man. I'll definitely want to do that. Yeah. So my uh, Instagram is progressive underscore calisthenics. Mm -hmm. And the book that I'm writing is going to be called Systematic Calisthenics. And I do have an Instagram page up, um, Systematic Calisthenics, okay. that in the near future, I'm going to start posting very basic information, starting to share some of the information that's going to be in the book. Um, so, yeah. All right, man. Thank you so much. I'll make sure I put both of those in the show notes. Make sure you guys follow Ken, man. Just flat out beast. And as you watch his page, don't feel like he's just a beast and you can't do it too. He's going to show you how to progressively do that stuff well with his book coming out with more content on both of these pages. I hope you guys enjoyed this show as much as we enjoyed making it for you. Until next time, peace and love. And always remember to be yourself. Love and all you guys.